Displaying pictures in the gallery is something that's so easy to do with one of the many jQuery plugins, but what if you want to use the HTML canvas tag? Capital FM recently created a HTML5 showcase page called Be A Star. At the bottom of this page, they show off a rather fancy image gallery. The gallery uses HTML5 canvas, and over the next four minutes or so, I'm going to show you how you can get started with something like this yourself. The canvas tag is like a bitmap. Once we draw an image on the canvas, we can't go back and query that image to obtain its properties. Unlike DOM objects, we cannot simply animate them by altering their X and Y coordinates. To animate using the canvas tag, you create a loop and then 24 times per second, you redraw the entire canvas. If you want to animate an image, it's up to you to hold a reference to that image and then redraw the image by placing it in a different position on the canvas on every tick of the loop. Because this is so complicated, I'm going to use a nice little library called easel.js. The easel library provides a full hierarchical display list, a core interaction model, and a helper class to make working with Canvas much easier. It's probably easier to show than explain, so let's get started. To use easel in a page, you will need to download the library from easelljs.com, and then add the following scripts to the header of the document. Next, you'll need to add a Canvas element to the document. You will also need to set the onload property of the body tag so that we'll call a JavaScript function called init when the page loads. We will create an init function in a second. Here we've added the init function to the page. Firstly, we'll set a global variable called canvas and populate it with a canvas element that's on the page. We have declared the global canvas variable just outside and above the init function. Next, we'll attach the canvas elements on mouse move event to a new function called on mouse move. We will create this function later and it will enable us to determine where the mouse is on the canvas and then animate the picture gallery accordingly. Next we'll populate the stage variable with a new stage object. The stage object is part of the easel.js library and is used to keep track of all the objects that will be drawn on the canvas. Next I've added a for loop that adds a number of images to an array called pictures. If you were doing this for real you would add your own pictures here rather than adding a number of dummy images. Finally I've added a listener to the tick object. The tick object is part of the easel.js library and provides a heartbeat to the project. On every beat of this heartbeat, the library will fire the function on the page called tick. Now you may have noticed that every time I have added a picture to the array, I set the onload event of the image to a function called image loaded. When the image is successfully loaded, this function is called. This is a mechanism to preload the images before attempting to add them to the canvas. The function image load is called by each image. When a new image is loaded, it increments the image count variable. When the image count variable is equal to the number of pictures, then we can call the function create bitmaps. The image loaded function ensures that all of our images are preloaded before we go to the create bitmaps function. In the create bitmaps function, we loop through each image and create a new bitmap. This bitmap is then added to the stage object. First, we create a new bitmap object. Then we set the X property of the bitmap. This is the horizontal coordinate that the image will have on the canvas. Next, I have set the Y property, which is the vertical position of the image on the canvas. I have set the rotation property to a number between 0 and 45. This will ensure that the images are randomly rotated between 0 and 45 degrees when they are drawn on the canvas. Lastly, I add the bitmap object as a child of the stage object. Now, if we run the project, nothing's going to happen and we're going to end up with a white screen. You see, to get the stage object to draw its objects to the canvas, we need to add the function tick. This function is called by the tick object that we set up earlier. It's important at the end of this function to fire the stage.tick function. We should now see the images have appeared as expected on the canvas. However, when we move our mouse from left to right, nothing happens. This is because we haven't told the onMouse move event to do anything in particular. Now, I've sped this section up because it took far too long to write, but basically, what I'm doing is determining a direction based upon how far left or how far right the mouse is positioned on the screen. This direction number will be between minus 10 and 10. Once I have a direction setting, I update the X position of all the images that are children of the stage object. As I'm doing this inside the tick loop, this will give the effect that the images are moving or animating. We should see that now, as we move the mouse left and right, the images move along with the mouse. That's as far as I'm going to go with this demo for today. But if you want to learn more or see the accompanying blog post, then head over to ubelly.com.